Okay, now we're moving into our next section, which is for using the trigger point ball. Um, and this is the trigger point ball. And you might be wondering, okay, well, looks like a tennis ball, right? But it's not. It's a little bit different than a tennis ball. Um, this ball is used for um, getting a like, deeper. So we just use the foam roller, which is great. But this one's a, as obviously a little broader. You get some of that broad tension out and then you can go into the trigger point ball and really get those deep, um, deep areas, work on more specific things. And I'm going to show you some of my favorite ways to use this ball, but I'm not going to show you every single way it can be used. You get to be creative, try it in areas that you want to try it on. Um, just use the tips that I share throughout this video for any area that you end up taking it on. And this is kind of the same the same tips and ideas as using the um, foam roller. So we don't really want to use it on straight on the spinal column. We don't want to use it straight on bones. We want to use it in our meaty flesh of our muscles, um, ideally where the trigger points are. So I, I'll share a chart of what where trigger points are located throughout the body um, or where you're feeling sore. So when you're and then when you're using it on an area, get into that spot use your body weight. Don't go too deep. Just let it get to the spot where you can feel the referral, but it's not too much for your body to accept the, the pressure that you're giving it. If you feel like your body is fighting against the ball, back off a little bit and let your body relax into that. Um, and then just let your body release against whatever it is. So if you just, so if you're using it, let's say in your arm and you feel something referring down, then just let it really, let hold that ball there until it releases and you don't feel the referral anymore. Or if you feel like you've been holding it for too long, just move on and come back to it. And you might have to come back to it a couple days in a row. Again, so just be creative with where you use this. I feel like there's so many uses. I use it and I still haven't used it. I mean, I think that there's so many other things I still could use it on, even though I use it all the time. Um, so how is this different than a trigger point or than a tennis ball? So first of all, it's hard, so it has a, a hard core, so it won't collapse. Like a trigger point is hollow, so sometimes I feel like if you use it too much, it'll collapse and then you can't use it as great. Um, also, it's grippy, so when you're using it on a wall or something like that, it's not gonna fall as easily as like, I feel like the, the tennis ball has like a slippery or more, a more slippery outside, so it falls more easily in different things. This is just like a little bit better. We do have these in stock in store and online um, if you wanna grab yours after the video. I don't blame you. Um, so I'm just going to kind of take you through a few of my favorite ways to use this ball and let's get started. So I'm going to start at the head and kind of work my way down. So when I work on my neck, I always go on my back on the floor. And then I'm going to try to show you, take this ball and put it right underneath my occipital ridge in my neck muscles. And if you can kind of see, I'm going like right here in the meaty flesh on the side of my spinal column. Again, we don't want to go right on the spinal column by any means, but then I just put it here. I use this the most when I'm having headaches and I can just feel it so tight right underneath there, underneath my head. And then as you can see, I kind of just look to the side and then I'll go and I'll change and I'll just look up. And then I'll just hold the spots that feel very tender. And I don't want to necessarily want to move the ball, but I'm just using the ball and moving my neck. So I'm getting different muscle insertions all along the side of my neck there. And then I'll move it down a little bit to get different areas of my neck and then just do it on both sides. So this time, I don't know if you do it on the other side of my neck. And I was just saying it's not slippery, but it slips from my hair. <laughs> so it's generally not slippery on just like fabric or skin, but with the hair involved, it gets a little bit more slippery here. So then of course I start feeling, finding spots that feel good and then go with that. Um, so that's what I do for my neck and head. Again, I especially do that when I'm feeling like I'm having headaches that's coming from my suboccipital ridge and headaches that are coming from there oftentimes will come up and wrap around to your temple or around your ear. I'm sorry, to the front of your head or around your ear. Um, and you can try using it in there. If it's too tender to use on your neck, if your neck is too tender, don't do it. It's just something that I personally love to do. Um, so I do it there. I'm just going to continue to move down as we go. The next spot I'm going to do is just right between my shoulder blades. You can also do this on a wall. So if it's hard for you to get down onto the floor, you can also do this on a wall and I'll show you that in just a minute when I stand up. 
So I'm going to put this right between my shoulder blades. And then I'm just going to pull, pull out my shoulder blade. And just find the spot that's sore and you can kind of move up and down as you need on the floor. And then just hold spots as you find them. I don't have a whole lot going on in between my shoulders right now, so I'm just kind of trying to show you. But you can put it all along be between your shoulder blades, all along your spinal um, along the side of your spinal column. Again, you don't want to be straight on your spinal column by any means. Um, but one of my favorite spots to use this little ball is in my low back. Um, I've had some low back tension and pain in the past. And it can get sore, especially if I'm pregnant or if I'm having babies or different things. So my spinal column is here, so I'm just going right up to the side of it. And I don't know if this is hard to learn like this or not, but I, you can't actually see the ball, so you might not actually be able to see what I'm doing. We, hopefully this will still help you guys. And then so I just find spots in my low back, and I just hold them. And then as you get lower on the floor... So as you get lower on the floor, it'll be deeper for you as well. So use your hips to kind of go out and back. And then you can even roll onto your, like roll your legs one way or the other and find the spot that's... All right, so I'm just gonna try to explain this. <laughs> Setting up, it's a little bit more complicated. Um, so on your back, you can just kind of roll it back and forth when you're laying down and then put your knees you can kind of bring your knees like this way and that to get where that perfect spot is for you. Um, and then when you find a spot, just sit there and hold it and leave your knees right where they might feel the best. Um, again, you don't want to be right on your spinal column, but anywhere in that low back. And then also I do go on the SI joints, which is right on my sacrum. So while I'm not on my spinal column, I'm more on my sacrum. There's a lot of connective tissue there that feels really good to get worked on as well. Um, so I'll kind of go in there and use this trigger point ball there. Um, so that's a little back. It was really hard to kind of show you because you can't see the ball. It gets lost underneath me, right? But if you have any questions, just ask me. Um, maybe if that part was confusing, we can, I can kind of show you on Trina a different time. But just play with it. Again, be creative. Play with it. Like, listen to your body and just what it's telling you um, is the best way I can really explain that. Before we go on to the hips and the glutes, I do wanna show you, um, I have had people, I'm gonna show you on this chair. So you can use this also on your arms. So you can also use this on your arms. Um, as massage therapists, we have a lot of tension in our arms um, and a lot of our muscles. So I don't necessarily use it up here. I guess you could, when we're standing up on the wall, I'll show you how you can use it in your deltoids. But in our forearms, we have all of our muscles kind of starting our elbow and going all the way down into our fingertips. They actually attach way down here at our fingertips. So you can use this ball to kind of go back and forth on your arms if you have a lot of arm issues. And then like over here, for example, it's like doo -doo -doo, walk in the park, it doesn't feel like anything for me. But as soon as I start to get up here, I start to feel some tension. So I'm just gonna hold this here. You can go a little bit more quickly with the ball when you can feel like there's nothing really going on. You're not feeling any tension, you're not feeling any pain. And then when you start to feel the tension and pain, just hold it till it relaxes. And then all the way up into the elbow to make sure we're getting all the areas that this is feeling pretty good too. And then there is one spot here. And then if you need a little bit more pressure because this upper area is a little bit more meaty, just use your arm. Or even like I'm thinking like I could do this. Or you could have somebody do this for you. Have a spouse do it for you and tell them how much pressure you want, right? But this is just us doing it on ourselves. And same thing with the low back. You could have somebody do it for you. And if you see, if you like, did you see myself slip right there? That's just because these muscles in here are stringy. It's not bad if you slip over a muscle. These muscles are just thin and ropey. So you're just flipping over one and going to the next is all. So 
So yeah, just play around with it. Do it whatever feels good. Ooh, I have a trigger point right there. It's going down into my hand. So if you find a trigger point, just hold this spot, let it release, go slow. You'll know to release if the, the tension or the tingling or the pain goes away or if it lessens or if it changes. So you'll kind of see me moving it a little bit here and there. It's just because like, oh, I'm not feeling it right there, but do I feel it right here? It's just a little spot over, but oh yeah, it's there too. So let's release that spot too. So you just want to make sure you get this whole area and then you can do it on the other arm as well. This arm is actually feeling really good. So then yeah, it can be a really good assessment tool for kind of how you're doing and how your arms are doing, how your limbs are doing, how anything is doing really. All right, so those are the arms. So now I'm gonna go down into the hips and legs. Um, this is gonna be, so hips tend to be more tender when we're working on them. And because this is smaller, it's gonna be a lot more intense than a foam roller. If I was having pain in my hips and legs, I would start with a foam roller. And if it's feeling really good with the foam roller, then you could take it a little bit deeper with something like this. Um, so just a little warning before we get started. So again, kind of like with the foam roller, I'm just going to use one leg as, let me see if I can get into this video a little bit better. So again, kind of like with the foam roller, I'm just going to use one leg as my mover and the leg is getting worked on just to try to relax it the entire time and just get it, let it get worked on. Um, mostly I'm going to try and use this in my hip. So if you're feeling a spot that you want to try using this on, just use it. And then if you find the spot, just hang out and let that spot release. Um, I would probably foam roll first, find spots that are tender, and then kind of go into those spots with this and get in the best you can. So you can kind of get into the front of the, the um, quad muscle here. And then if you're going to go in your glutes, you could go in this way. And then just use kind of your, and then just use your glute and hip to kind of like open your hip and shut it and just kind of see where you feel that tension. And then this is really good for getting things like sciatic, that piriformis. Um, and getting, so like with the foam roller, like I said, it was a little bit more of a broad area and now you can really get into like the piriformis, for example, and let that release. And you can see I'm just letting my leg relax. You can even put it down so you can get in there a little bit better. And then use your other leg to kind of move back and forth, find spots. And then when you find a spot, so you'll see my kind of lift my whole hips up when I'm finding the spot. And then when I find a spot, try to just relax all of that and let yourself sink into the ball. The hips are tender and require a lot of breathing. Take it slow. If you feel like you're holding against an area, try to just relax the best you can. Deep breathing helps with relaxing a lot. And you wanna make sure you're breathing with your belly. So when you're taking an inhale, make sure your belly gets big. And when you exhale, your belly sinks back down. So I was just doing piriformis. You can kind of take it up into your hips as well if you'd like. There's a cherry point right on the top of my um, hip bone. It's not on my hip bone, but it's right on top. So I'm going to sit there a little bit. Again, you saw me move my leg. Just do what your body wants you to do. Ooh, this trigger point is actually referring up into my low back. Trust your body. So many people tell me, oh, I tried doing that, but I didn't know if I was doing it right. If it feels good, you're probably doing it right. Just trust yourself, trust your body, trust your intuition, and you'll do great. Now my body wants to go on its side. Ooh. And this trigger point is actually going all the way down into my leg here. 
And how do we know if it's a trigger point? It's a trigger point if it refers tension or pain or sensation somewhere else. That one is actually quite intense, but now it's releasing and I can feel like I can feel like I can handle it a little bit more now. If it wasn't releasing, I would have came off and went in a little bit more slowly. So the trigger point ball is actually like right underneath my hip here. So again, you couldn't see it, but I hope me talking through that whole area really helped you understand how I use this ball to get into different areas of my hips and my body. Um, you can kind of do the same thing in your quads like I did in the foam rolling video. So kind of just take it like this and do it in the front of your leg. I want you guys to be able to see this here. And then you can kind of just roll up. I'm not using my full weight right now, but let's see here. So you can kind of just roll up and if you find any spots, or if you use the trigger point, if you use the foam roller already and you know there's a spot that's not going away, then go find it with the trigger point ball. And then same thing here in the shins, you can use it there as well. Ooh, that's tender. Um, I'm not gonna do that right now just because it's super tender, but same thing that we did with foam rolling, you can roll it up and down, or if you know that there's a trigger point in an area, you can use it there as well. The last one I'm gonna show you is on the bottom of my foot. I'm going to show you how to do it um, for plantar fasciitis. So just, I'm going to pause this one minute. Okay, so now one of my favorite ways to use the sugar point ball is actually on the bottom of my feet. Super easy to do. Um, really, really good for plantar fasciitis or anything like that. So all you take is just put the ball on the floor, sit in a chair. You can do this when you're sitting at home on a chair, anything like that. And then just use the weight of yourself to just go back and forth. So I usually start right at the bottom of my foot. Can't really see because I have black socks on. Um, right above my heel and then all the way up into the ball of my foot um, because all this muscle here on the bottom of your foot can be really tender and um, a lot of times it's right above the heel where that plantar fasciitis starts so you can kind of just use it on the bottom of your foot again find the tender spots form all the heck out of it or use the ball a lot on it and just do what feels good for you um, the feet are just really kind of just doing what works good for you. You could also stand up. And so you have more weight to use on the bottom of your foot there. And for me, I don't have a lot of tension in the bottom of my feet, so this feels better for me. But just, you just have to take it and do what feels best for you and your body. Everybody's different, so that's why everything is so, that's why my recommended recommendations are just take it as you need to. Um, it's kind of like massage, right? Every single client, I do something a little bit different, a little bit different pressure. I don't just do a one size fits all. Same thing with the sugar point ball. Just do what works best for you. Use the pressure that you need to for your body and just listen to your intuition. Um, so that's feet, legs, everything on the floor. I'm gonna show you a couple more things on the wall and then we'll finish up. Um, but other than that, I hope you're getting a really good idea of how to use this sugar point ball. Okay, so one thing I did forget today was you can use a sock, like if you have a men's long sock, for between your shoulder blades especially, because then it won't fall out. Like right, right now, for example, I kinda am just like coming off the wall a little bit and then using this. But if you had a men's sock, you could just control it with your arm and just pull up the ball wherever you needed to. Um, so this is a really good way to get between the shoulder blades instead of having to scoop back and forth on the floor like I was doing earlier, you can kind of just get it on your back and then use the weight of your body and just roll up and down. And then if you find a spot, just hang out there. Like everything else, hang out, sit, let it release, and then all the way. And then you can bring it down a little bit and then at some point you'll be able to reach back with your other hand. Try to let this arm relax, the arm that you're working and just kind of wherever you feel. And then you can also go a little bit side to side too. You'll feel, if you feel a little bit, you're going over a little bit of a bump, that's just your paraspinal muscles and that's okay. As long as you're not on your spinal column and you'll be able to feel if you are. So up and down, all along your spinal column. Go a little bit back and forth, you'll feel that. And then even down into your low back and this is another way you could grab low back as well here. And this is actually a really nice way to get low back too because you can see I'm going over um, into QL like this. So 
I start, I want to show you. So if you watch my hand, you'll see like it'll bump down right here. In that bump down is right where you want to get that ball, but you can go back and forth over in oh, that bump and into your QL, which is a little bit deeper. Um, and just, so you can kind of go back and forth there. And then you'll feel there's like a really tender spot right in the middle of your low back there. And that one for me, it refers down just a little bit. And you just hold that spot. So just lean in really well and you can go all the way around kind of right underneath your ribs there as well. And just use the wall in your body to just pin that between your body and get a really good in there. And then also I talked about doing that on my sacrum. You could just take it between the wall here too and do it on your sacrum there on a side joint. So this is really nice for people who can't get down on the floor very well because then you can use this ball right on the wall and even like into my hip this is really easy to use. You can kind of see it there. I'm rolling in the front of my hip, on the side of my hip, all the way down and around my hip. The only thing with standing up is you're just using the muscles to stand so you're not able to relax them quite as much as you would laying on the floor. But again, really nice for people who can't lay down, um, who have a harder time laying down there as well. And then you can you can kind of see where it's at in the top of my hip. You can take it down into more of your glute area, into your um, piriformis, which is like a major cause of a lot of SI joint. And actually, now that I'm saying this too, you can, um, I am using this leg more for my stability and support and my pressure. And I'm just kind of like, this leg isn't doing a whole lot. So don't use both legs to put the pressure in, but just use one leg to press into the wall and have the other one just relax as much as possible. And just play around with it, have fun. Kind of feel around, see what your body says wants to work on. Press into an area if it's feeling it, let that release and move on to the next area. Um, again, that's not probably every single place that you could use this trigger point ball, but that gives you a really good idea of some places to start, um, how it could use it on your body. And just use your intuition, let your body talk to you. What do you want worked on? What needs to be worked on? What feels best and just go from there. Again, if you have any, any questions, feel free to leave comments below in the comment box or email me at encompasstm at gmail.com or DM me on any social media platform as well. Um, I hope this helps you guys out. Um, this is like what we love to use for self-care at home, our trigger point ball, our foam roller, and our stretches. So I hope this helps and um, I hope you guys learned something today and had some fun.